On today's Apple Daily, I thought Apple Arcade was supposed to suck. I'm my Cave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and we must be doing something okay because somebody stole our video. Yes, I've had to file my first copyright takedown notice uh, with YouTube because somebody just completely grabbed the entire video that we did on why Intel is terrified of what Apple is doing. So yeah, sorry dude, uh, that was mine. Give it back. Apple Arcade massive updates. So Apple Arcade launched at Apple's, let's be honest, a pretty weird services event a while back when they talked about Apple Card and Apple Music Plus and a bunch of other stuff. And honestly, it was a great concept, but it was underwhelmingly executed, a little bit like Apple TV. There were a handful of great games, but there also seemed to be quite a lot of filler. And since then, Apple has been quietly adding more and more games, and they've been getting better and better. And over the weekend, Apple has dumped 30 new games uh, on various different genres and target audiences onto its platform, and suddenly it's something to really take note of. So the latest additions are NBA 2K21 Arcade Edition, Star Trek Legends, Wonderbox the Adventure Maker, Clap Hands Golf, Taiko no Tatsujin Tap Beat, Simon's Cat Storytime, which looks a lot like Homescape, The Oregon Trail which is remastered, Song Pop Party, World of Demons, Cut the Rope remastered, Fantasian, Badland Plus, Black Plus, Fruit Ninja Classic Plus, Monument Valley Plus, The Room 2 Plus, Chess Play and Learn Plus, Reigns Plus, Chameleon Plus, Three Years Plus, Don't Starve Pocket Edition Plus, Flip Flop Solitaire Plus, Backgammon Plus, Good Sudoku Plus, Checkers Royale Plus, Mahjong Titan Plus, Really Bad Chess Plus, Spell Tower Plus, Tiny Crossword Plus, Solitaire by Mobility Wear Plus, and Sudoku Simple Plus. So as you can see, there are a lot of Plus games there, which are games that originally existed in the App Store. And while Apple was always talking about full exclusives when they launched Apple Arcade, I'm glad that they've made this change, as it allows them to bring more recognisable characters and IP in general that will help to grow the platform. Also, I think Apple has had a little bit of a change of direction with it and why they're doing it the way they are. And it's interesting too that among the bigger names here and the arcade style games, you've also got a segment of more traditional games like Mahjong, Sudoku and of course Solitaire, which I think are designed to push users more towards those family plans as it's pushing into those games that older users might pre prefer. And while the games are most likely available ad supported before through the App Store, this will massively improve the user experience. Even adding the absolute classic The Oregon Trail in its updated form is a massive nostalgia hit. That was one of the old kind of Apple II text adventure games, if I remember correctly. And I have to say, there are amazing free games like Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG on Apple's App Store, but there are consistent prompts to buy loot boxes and battle passes, which is the great thing about Apple Arcade. There are no add-ons or advert interruptions. It fits perfectly for Apple when pushing the whole we don't want your data narrative to because they're not trying to advertise to you. And I think a lot of Apple users who value privacy in that way will be more than willing to pay the $4.99 a month to have high quality games that are not only interruption free but protect your privacy better too. Now these changes have finally pushed me to picking up a game controller which will be on the way today along with the fact that my kids are also now getting far more into iPad games uh, even though their iPads are kind of old but Ted who's four spent a bunch of time playing Agent Intercept and Steven Universe both from Apple Arcade on the TV the other day and he's absolutely loving those games but once I've got that controller I'm really looking forward to playing a bit more of the NBA 2K21 which looks absolutely amazing though playing a little of it so far on the iPhone has been a little bit cramped with the touch controls on the screen I'll give it a go on the iPad too, uh, but I think it will really shine on the TV. But this is where we kind of come into problems because my Apple TV is the old uh, Apple TV HD, which has also got an older processor. It's either an A8 or A9. I think it's A8. Uh, so it might struggle with the higher end games, but I also have a 4K TV hooked up to an M1 Mac here. So I think we'll be all good. All in all, I think that these new games coming are not a confirmation of a gaming focused Apple TV coming around the corner, which is what a lot of people have said. I think it's actually the opposite, that if we were about to see that, we'd have probably seen these games held back to drop with that hardware. However, they do come just as people's three-month trial of Apple Arcade that came with the devices they got at Christmas would have been expiring, which is probably a better guess at why it's arrived when it has. Now, have you used Apple Arcade before? And if so, what are the highlights for you? And if not... Do you think that these new additions tip the balance for you? Let me know down in the comments, and I'd love to know if you are going to give it a try. Next up, we're going into some iCave answers. Eliezer Aquino asks iCave answers. Do you really care about USB-C on iPhone? 
as rumors are saying we'll never have USB-C since there may be portless or cableless. Okay, so controversial opinion here that goes along with my I don't care about 120 hertz refresh rates. Uh, I don't care about USB-C either coming to an iPhone. It doesn't make any difference to me. I barely plug anything into my iPhone. The only thing that I plug in right now is uh, external microphones when I'm recording. But I've also moved away from that because this bad boy is right here. Um, I've also got another microphone probably on the way to do a review of. So uh, look out for some changes in sound quality soon. We will see if it's better or worse or indifferent. But going back to the iPhone itself, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't matter. Are you, are you thinking you're going to run around with external hard drives plugged into your phone to edit videos off of, or what? what is it that people actually want to have USB-C on there for? Is it just because that's what Android uses for charging? Because that doesn't make it better. Um, I think Lightning is probably a better solution in the first place. It's a lot easier to clean out the port when it gets full of lint. Um, it hasn't got that kind of fin in the middle of it that uh, can also get damaged. Lightning is a better port in terms of design than USB-C. Now it might be less flexible because it's not an industry standard, but it also doesn't matter because anything that you can plug into USB-C, you can get a dongle that will uh, that will work with this as well. And let's be honest, there's not much stuff out there that's even USB-C um, by default. So I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. The Lightning port is better though for waterproofness because it's a lot easier for that water to get back out again. Do I think we'll ever see USB-C on an iPhone? No, I do not. The Golden S asks iCave answers. Will Apple ever actually give Macs the ability to game AAA titles and other games gaming PCs were able to do? So just like with a lot of other questions about when will Apple do this or that, Apple is not the one that's holding this up. This is game developers not developing stuff to go on the Mac. There's a lot of stuff about the way that the Mac is that means that games developed for Windows specifically will not run on it because they need things like DirectX, which is exclusive to Microsoft. But Apple has got its own frameworks that are in place, things like Metal that allow games to run actually probably better than they would on DirectX if the game is written for them, given the same hardware. And of course, all of Apple's stuff is going to be running on their own proprietary GPUs and their own proprietary processors from now on which is going to make it a little bit more tricky for the game developers to port the same games across. It's not going to be a case of running the same code. It's going to have to be basically rewritten for Apple. How quickly will this happen? Well, it will depend on how quickly Apple Silicon itself gets adopted by the larger market. Now, right now, Apple Silicon is something like 0.8% of the computer market. Because of how well Apple Silicon has been received, analysts are saying it could be as high as 7 or 8% by the middle of the year, which is like ridiculous growth. If that's the case, then it becomes more attractive for developers to come to. And the fact that they can take the same code pretty much and port it across to iPhones and Apple TV and uh, iPads and all the rest of Apple's ecosystem does mean that there's a lot more kind of scope for these things but also universal binaries it does mean that you might well be purchasing it once and then be able to use it across all of those platforms so if Apple was to go for the uh, Mac SE uh, the Mac Mini SE that we've been talking about in previous videos where it's a very low cost computer that will go into pretty much all the rooms of your house or you know any room with a TV in it so you would have a Mac Mini SE next to your TV in the lounge in the kids bedrooms that they can use for schoolwork as well as a bit of gaming that makes a lot of sense and that would again massively grow the user base and make it much more attractive to developers to actually make stuff for it so that is I think probably the way that it's going to go obviously Apple could also acquire some game studios the same way that uh, Microsoft just acquired Bethesda for their Xbox platform. It will be very interesting to see if Apple goes down that route. Um, but as I say, I, I'm not 100% sure that it's Apple's fault here. Marcin Kowalczyk asks I cave answers. I wonder if Apple will ever give developers in the future the option to pin specific process or thread to either a Firestorm core or an Ice Storm core, or will they just stick with TCD? So, uh, assuming you're talking about Apple Silicon Macs, then... Uh, it kind of makes sense, but I don't think that Apple will do it because obviously as Apple Silicon rolls out, we're going to get different cores. So pinning it to a Firestorm core or an Ice Storm core won't make sense. If you go to, we're just going to pin it to an a, a performance core or a efficiency core, then again, the performance of those cores is going to start to vary as we get through more generations. So once we get to M2 and M3 generations, 
again you're going to be getting different core architectures you're going to be getting different stuff going on inside so the way that um, the apps are developed right now is you just develop your code and then Apple will manage where it needs to run whether it needs a Firestorm core or a pair of Firestorm cores or all of the Firestorm cores and just keeping the ice storm for your system stuff like it's far better for Apple to be able to manage that stuff because it will be able to then scale whatever you're doing to the system that you happen to be on at the time. I don't see Apple allowing that kind of level of uh, interaction with the cores to developers. It just doesn't really make sense, especially as uh, apps start to get older and if they're not updated regularly, then you will get a lot more problems like that. Also, right now, remember that these apps have to be written to be able to run on Intel and on Apple Silicon. They need to be universal apps right now so that uh, legacy users still have access to these things. So uh, I don't see that happening, but it's an interesting question. And um, who knows what Apple will allow developers to do in future. But I don't see anything through the App Store letting you uh, be that specific about where your stuff is running. So before I let everyone go today, we have got a new t-shirt design. You can find it just up here and if you want to get that on a t-shirt or a mug or some other stuff I haven't quite decided what it's going to go on yet you can go over to icavedave.com forward slash merch and uh, and you can pick it up so the design is inspired by Roy Lichtenstein's kind of pop art that he was doing um, I was studying this when I was about 15 at school and it's one of those uh, art styles that's really stuck with me really like this kind of look uh, hope you do too let me know your thoughts in the comments or by buying a t-shirt that will also convince me that you enjoy the design. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.